Newcastle to an early lead and it goes pear shaped. I mean, the scenes were incredible, were they not? Well, I was watching it like everyone else with a an anticipation of what was to come, um, mm. and the team didn't let me down really in terms of what I expected. Yeah, I was working on match the day with James McFadden, and I said to him even after Newcastle scored, they're not going to win the game because. What they did is they played with their heart in the early part of the game. You know, they went after Tottenham, and rightly so, because that's what the fans wanted to see. But it left them wide open because defensively they're all over the place. Yeah. Um, and Tottenham soon worked it out with the quality they've got. They won the game comfortably, didn't they? But Newcastle have got big problems. You know, I know there's a lot of optimism and excitement, and rightly so, what's to come. There's, there's going to be better times ahead. There's no doubt about that. But... First and foremost, you've got to stay in the Premier League. That's it. And what I'm watching at the moment is a team who are going to struggle to do that because there's there's no cohesion defensively. There's mm. there's there's a lack of experience and leadership at the back. Um, it looks like Bruce has not got the right balance or tactics. It's it, it's it's sorry watching. Yeah. The second half, I mean, the second half, they didn't have any legs. They didn't have any get up and go. There wasn't a change. They should have changed personnel earlier. I think tactically they should have changed, yeah. but nothing happened. And and to be honest, Bruce staying there now, it's become toxic, hasn't it? It's it's a situation where the owners are going to be looking at it and thinking, we, we need to make a change. To well, give I mean, room. two things, Simon, really. We'll talk Steve Bruce in a second. He says he carries on regardless mm. until he's told uh, otherwise. Uh, I was told late last night that the, the people at the top will probably talk to you about strategy sometime in the next week. So we can look forward to that. Danny rightly mentioned Steve Bruce, uh, Simon. This was him post-match about the need for clarity. That's for other people to decide. If I was reading everything and seeing what we're seeing last week, uh, I might not have been here today. But look, my job is to get a few results. And unfortunately, this year, whether it be a Newcastle manager or whoever manager in the Premier League, you haven't won in seven or eight, then you become under pressure, if that's, that's the right word. And I'll crack on and carry on as best I can until I hear otherwise. Every football club needs clarity. It needs uh, from the top, right, the way through to everything that makes a football club the way it is. And, you know, with this, the new owners have been very respectful. You know, I can't say enough of them, of the way they've gone about their business over the last week, 10 days. So it's up to me in the near future anyway to hopefully get better. So the Saudis are in, but Simon, what they aren't are magicians and they might have to become magicians because how on earth do they stop Newcastle if the trend goes on getting relegated? Um, look, I mean, you're eight games into the season. You know, the teams have had dreadful starts and managed to pull out of a nosedive. So it's yep. not beyond the wish of man for this to be um, uh, arrested, this slump. Well, there's other teams struggling just as much. Yeah. That's the and there's other teams that are, you know, equally as poor. And let's be clear, Newcastle were very, very poor in that game. The first 15 minutes took care of itself because the players were playing on on on, on energy, on, on uh, you know, enthusiasm. But you look at the overall performance and it was very easy for Tottenham. And you can look at Steve Bruce, and I know that every time that someone that likes Steve Bruce, by the way, someone that injuncted him, put him on guard and leave had a massive bun fight with him in my case, but thinks he's a decent man irrespective of all that. Anyone that defends him is one of his media cronies, but you look at some of those players on that pitch and they struggle to get into a championship side. You look at the defending from so-called captains of the team yeah. for opening goals and for uh, significant parts of the play, and you think to yourself, wow... Now, you go to the narrative of what do you do next. There is very little point. People can make all these sly digs about these eight million reasons why Steve Bruce is staying there. The people that are writing these articles that have seemed to have got awfully personal over the last year, and I've written, read some of the articles written by people like Craig Hope that have moved from being a Newcastle observer to being very partisan in the distaste for Steve Bruce. I don't think Steve should have said some of the things he said on Friday. I think he should have kept away from saying you people should have been slapped because you got it wrong yeah. because it was a matter of time. His was just an argument about when the timing happened. So I thought he allowed himself to get into a bun fight with people. But there was very little point Steve staying there. The players will, the players need a different voice, whether that's Graham Jones. Graham Jones is part of the tactical solution. And if that's his, and he, if he's part of that tactical solution, then he's in the cart as well because that was crap on Sunday after the first goal. First goal was brilliant. Mm. Fabulous centre-forward play. First 15 minutes at it across the pitch. The moment the game settled down a little bit and Tottenham started to realise what they were playing against, it became what it became. Of course, Now, yeah. Steve sat there after the game. And I don't feel sorry for people. Sentiment it doesn't have a place in football. But that's a dead man walking. The players know it. For the, for, the, for the sake of the players, you need somebody else in there. Yeah, it's time. 
It's time. It's, time. it's, it's <clears> an, ex <throat> ex an, ex an exercise in futility keeping him there. But we it's spoke about this before. Is it time to bring in somebody, stop gap, or somebody to come in and say, well, right, you it, are our man? So, look, the world turns very quickly, right? If you, can do, if you can do things very quickly, like build hospitals in London when a pandemic comes, you can find a bleeding person to go into a football club when you've taken it over with all the money in the world that you've got, mm. right? You can fix that solution if you've got the intellectual capital and the football now to do it. And if you haven't, then get some people alongside you that have. And if you've known you're going to take over this football club because quite rightly I've been reprimanded for saying it was never going to happen I said it wasn't going to happen for different reasons but if you knew three months ago when you corrected me on this show you were going to get this football club at some point you must have had a bleeding blueprint yeah because Steve Bruce at one at no point was ever going to be that blueprint ever irrespective of they beat Tottenham on Sunday irrespective of whether they started the season well mm. he wasn't going to be the I guy I think the only thing I would forward. say is that you know as well better than I Simon when you've employed managers sometimes if you decide there's somebody you want and it does take a bit it's a bit like a player sometimes you have to engage you know entice them and engage them and, and, and have lots of meetings but you've had these conversations you've had them over the last three months if I buy this football club yeah. and if I take control of it you are someone I'm going to want to talk to I'm going to want to push that button quickly are you, you in? Yeah. are yeah. you in or are you out if you're unemployed or if you're available would would you be someone that would be interested in taking... You have those conversations. Now, I'm not suggesting that the world turns in a day. I'm not suggesting that Newcastle are in ultimate crisis. But you look at that group of players, you look at... I don't believe... And Jamie Redknapp said it, and I thought Kieran Dyer spoke brilliantly on Sky Sports oh, yeah, yesterday about the reality of what the situation is. Yeah. Yeah. Any manager coming in with that group of players is going to have some troubles on his hands unless he's able but, to re but there's re one, refresh it. You're right, but there's, there's one very... Simple detail when you watch Newcastle play at the moment. Too easy to play against, yeah. conceding too many goals. And one of Rafa's and Steve Bruce's um, disappointments, if you like, when you watch their teams play, is it wasn't exciting. It was very pragmatic and kind of just hanging in games and trying to nick points and nick wins. Very similar styles for a while. They both got criticised for it, and Bruce especially. But they have got to get back to not caring how it, about how it looks. And if that means playing five at the back and keeping five at the back and two holding midfield players in front and starting to stay in games, because if they play with a back four like that and try and go after teams, they're going to get annihilated. So whoever comes in has got to stop the rock. Danny, a lot of people saying, hang about, Roy Hodgson, that's not the worst shout we've ever heard for the time being in terms of stopping the rot. Steve Bruce clearly carries on or will carry on. He's not going to quit. And Simon's saying at the moment, maybe that's not the best answer in, in, in this predicament. Um, great shout by Danny Murphy, Roy Hodgson keeps the squad up, gets it under control, and then everybody moves on. I mean, he's 74 years of age. Would he Ooh. want the challenge? Uh, knowing Roy, I think he might. I, I, um, I know for sure the players would like him and be on board with him. You can't not. Um, he's been there, done it. He took Palace from an impossible position. Much they were in a much worse position than Newcastle, by the way, and kept them up comfortably. Um, he knows what he's doing. He's been in many relegation fights. Time at Fulham, time at West Brom. Yeah, Palette, you know he's been there, done it. And of course, with his age and what Newcastle want to do, it is a short term thing, but. The other option is to try try and go out and get the man you want to move the club forward and, and give him the, the, the project long term. But mm. which top manager is going to want to take that risk right now? Well, people, uh, uh, people talk uh, about uh, uh, Conte, who is a very capable manager, but apparently he's saying he's not interested. The reason he's not interested is because he doesn't want to waste a year in the championship. Well, the three being spoken about this morning, being touted at the moment, Roberto Martinez, Unai Emery and Steven Gerrard. Massive club like Rangers decided to take a risk on Stevie and it's worked both ways. But there is degree of loyalty needed to be shown back and I'm sure he feels that way. And there's six more success coming at Rangers. You know, they look like the dominant team in Scotland. I think the bit he wouldn't say, and I, and I don't mind saying, I haven't spoken to him, but I, I would think in the back of his mind, because he's bright, he'd be thinking, one, this is a hell of a risk going to Newcastle with the, t the squad he's, he's... At this he's, stage. At this stage. And furthermore, his ultimate ambition, I know he's focused on range to manage Liverpool Football Club. Now, if you go to Newcastle and it doesn't go well and you mess it up, he might just jeopardise that opportunity and he's not going to do that. Yeah, but Liverpool's not going to happen for a long Jim, time, you know football. It? You know football. Things can happen quickly. In two year, year, two year, three years, Jürgen Klopp's fantastic man. It's not, not getting him out of the club. I'm saying that things change quickly for whatever reason. Yeah. They can be personal yeah, circumstances. Yeah, yeah. It can be anything. Stevie's not going to jeopardise that foundation. He's already built hmm. a good stock. He's winning things. He's, he's successful at ranges. If he goes to Newcastle and fails, and if he goes in now or January, hmm. they get relegated, struggles in the championship or doesn't have a good start, whatever reason, 
all the money in the world, you still got to get that blend and those mm. relationships in the team. Why take the risk? Well, when when we were playing the Arthur Newman yep. interview there, I heard you, Simon, and I think the fans on YouTube and, and Facebook would be watching you saying, it'd be mad to leave Rangers. He'd be mad to at, leave at them. At this stage, yeah. I mean, I think the whole list that you just read out is a list that almost is laughable. Why would you take Martinez as a perennial failure? Um, you know, Everton fans will look back on his time at Everton saying, well, you played some nice football, but ultimately we weren't very happy with in the end. The Belgians have fallen at every single opportunity. Why would you take Unai Emery? He was laughed at of England. OK, he did a number one Man United, but a lot of people do a man, number one Man United these days uh, in, the, in the Europa final. He tried them out defensively. I, then, th I think, Martinez, you, you, I understand what you're saying, but there is a little bit of more sense in that one. Because but long term, I mean, Martinez isn't going to come for five minutes, so you've got to give him a four, four, three or four-year yeah, contract. Yeah. So is he going to be your guy to get you... Man, man City, after Man City came in, won the Premier League three years after they came in. Is this guy going to build you a football team that's going to take him, irrespective of the wealth, they've still got to somehow observe some semblance of financial fair play. So are, is he going to... Is this guy, Martinez, going to top Liverpool? Is he going to top Klopp? Is he going to top... It's um, unlikely. I, Guardiola? I don't <clears throat> think so. Or Tuchel. No, so but he has... who, who is, though? You're, you're saying minutes ago, look, Bruce can't say, this can't go on. It can't go on. Look, so I mean, who is... The bottom Danny, line is, is I'm, I'm, I'm not sitting there... And any, he's getting support I'm for I'm not it. sitting there any more... Um, than the average observer. So I'm not spending my time dissecting whom Newcastle should employ. It's I'm, com one. I'm commenting on what I've seen in front of me. I would have liked to have seen Steve Bruce had a better outcome on Sunday, primarily because I like the man, but also yeah. because I think it would have been a fitting uh, building block for them. Yeah, to yeah. Have. Okay, they, it didn't happen. They've got didn't no holding happen. ground. They've didn't got, happen. They've got no holding ground with Steve Bruce. No. That if they'd beaten Tottenham and looked like they were on their front foot, you could have had a holding ground and go, like, take your time, yeah. wait until January. They can't leave Steve in situ. No. Not because I'm talking out of school, not because I want him to get paid up and sit, sail off into the sunset with whatever compensation he right. doesn't, makes doesn't get. Makes sense to it, get rid. So they can't leave him in the job. Yeah. What do they do? They're what, looking at relegation what, they, of this they, trend. They have an stop. embarrassment of riches to look across the world if their mind's focused upon what they think they need. We're looking at Newcastle from the top down. They're in the club now. They can see the malaise. They can see what needs to be said in dressing rooms, what needs to be done. Now, whether that's... It's not Graham Jones as far as I'm concerned, but wherever they think it's Graham Jones, mm. they've got to pee or get off the pot, right? They can't sit there for weeks on end. Ironically, wouldn't it be ironic that if Steve Bruce takes the team on Saturday, it's against the side that he previously managed with Crystal Palace, which I was in charge of when I injuncted him, and that was his last game. But I'm not sitting here with a Magna Carta of a list of people that I would sit in situ for Newcastle. You're bringing names out, and I'm saying, if I'm Steve and Gerrard, A, with respect to what Daddy just said, he's walked into a league where for the first two seasons, Celtic were in ascendancy. The moment Celtic go in decline, Rangers have come to ascendancy. That's a different league than taking over Newcastle at this moment in time. They're banging in trouble with a really, really poor set of players in a hugely competitive league yep. with an expectation level, irrespective of what Newcastle fans say, that they're going to start their engines relatively shortly. It's a huge risk for Steve Gerrard, and he doesn't need to take it right now. Well, so many people get mentioned at the moment, and uh, when it comes to a sporting director, one name that was mentioned constantly in in recent days was this man who was at Lille Luis Campos yeah. uh, one of the best in the business sporting Camp directors can I just say sporting directors I've met a lot of them and I know the game's changed some clubs have sporting directors fine mm. but right now they don't need a bloody good sporting director they do them no, they need a manager no, they, who can coach those players to get some results or they'll be in the championship. Strategy, Danny. They need yeah, strategy. long term, yeah. short term. They need a sporting director to recruit a manager. All right, well, and that should okay. be and that should if, be the order. And and this guy Campos, with what he's done at Lille, yeah. is proper top. He's done draw. well. I'm not right. doubting him, but you don't. They haven't, Simon, got, Dan, you they haven't got any football now. There, they haven't got any what football now. What I'm saying there. is, you need somebody to appoint a man. It doesn't have to be a sporting director right now. You need someone to pick up the phone. Who's got football now? Who's got it there? Well, I don't know. Well, the guy that's been drafted in from, from PIF who, who well, works they, with if, all if the different Graham funds Jones, that they have in, in Saudi Arabia. Chat. If they ask hmm? Graham Jones, Martinez will be there tomorrow, won't he? Of course. <laughs> There's the link. <laughs> Absolutely. I know what you they, mean about sporting director in terms of the long term and, and creating some structure. They need decent operators. Right now you need a manager. Okay. Well, just for the record, Louis Campos just uh, told me just before we came on air, we got in touch with him. Right now he does not want to make any comment on the situation at Newcastle United. So Louis Campos, maybe it suggests to me watching from distance we'll keep an eye on him and we'll keep an eye on this Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Thursday morning 10 till 1 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport